Yo guys, welcome to the Zelda Fiction. Today we are gonna see, what if Naruto got harem with Fem Kayubi, Tsunade and Anko. Part 1. Huge shout out to Demon God of Chaos for this story. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. He remembered the burning in his stomach and the cries he had screamed in the night he had been born. It was both a blessing and a curse as the seal was still on his stoimage. He had been granted the genin rank after succeeding in protecting the scroll of seals and immediately had celebrated with Aruka. He had been shocked when he was told that the great QB no Kitsune was sealed within his stomach. Anyone would be afraid to learn that a gigantic Kitsune was inside you, but he was just a kid who had gone through so much that it didn't matter. He only aspired the Hokage title for anything resembling recognition from the villagers, but soon he knew that it was futile, with the QB still sealed within his stomach. It didn't matter to him. He would get something out of the villagers even if it were terror and fear. It didn't matter if he had to beg the fox to give him the power. He looked at the Chuanin who was smiling at him, and then he noticed that he had eaten his raiment slowly for a change. Thinking was really putting him off as his eating speed slowed to an almost normal pace. Naruto looked at the Chuanin who looked almost relieved when the kid in front of him had stopped eating and stood up. Naruto mentally chuckled and said. Iruka sensei I'm gonna go home now. Thanks for the raiment. Then Naruto walked away at a slow pace with his mind thinking a mile a minute. He had just felt something strange within his mind and suddenly thought. What if the QB wants to take over my body after he knows that I know of his existence? Then a voice was heard in his mind that made him stumble and land on the floor. I heard that. I am pleased to inform your bradish self that I am not a member of what you humans call a man. Instead behold my grace. An image of a scantily clad woman dressed only in garments which could be described as an extremely modified kimono which showed all the curves. Naruto's face paled as he saw the nine tails sticking out of the kimono and the red eyes. The woman was currently standing against a massive cage which held her trapped. Then he got in his home as fast as possible. He closed the door and let himself fall on the bed. When he fell asleep he noticed that he was standing outside of a massive gate which was covered with locks of all kinds. With a small push the door opened and the locks fell to the floor as the push crumbled them. Then he saw the cage with the gigantic Kitsune no Kitsune within it. The Kitsune hadn't noticed her visitor and was still thrashing in the cage, apparently irritated at something. Naruto coughed briefly and the massive demon turned towards him and said. What do you want? Naruto just stared as the QB once again shifted into young female form and scowled at him and said. Come to gloat at your prisoner. Come to humiliate the great demon QB. Suddenly the smile disappeared and she grabbed his orange jumpsuit and let a tail flick through the bars and immediately it latched onto Naruto and dragged him into the cage. There the kitsune turned woman smiled evilly and pressed her lips to the struggling young boys and she let her chakra seep into him. Naruto screeched in pain as the malevolent chakra began eating its way through the chakra paths, making the original chakra disappear. Blood began to pour out of the belly button and soon a pool of blood was formed and the seal was rapidly disintegrating. Not that anyone noticed because no chakra was emitted from the body. Naruto awoke with a startled gasp. Oi moment he had been kissed bib the woman, and now he was awake. He looked around and saw that he was bathed in a sticky liquid which was red. He smelled the familiar smell of fresh blood and saw that his jumpsuit was shredded and lay a few meters away from him on the ground. Dot. What really managed to make him gasp was the tail that was sticking out of his backbone. He gulped and suddenly he felt a tripping sound and saw that nine tails now adorned his body. He groaned and said. Why always me? Then he looked at the clock and saw that it was almost time for academy classes. A voice was heard in his mind. A voice that came from his tormentor. Don't you want to kill them? Want to destroy their houses and kill their bodies? Ravish their women and slaughter the men? Destroy their very souls for the hurt they have caused you? He didn't know what to do and he just stood there and replied back. Why did you do this to me? What is the use of me gaining tails and claws? He had just seen his claws that now adorned his hands and almost had ripped off a good chunk of meat of his legs when he scratched an itchy spot. QB's voice was heard in his mind. Don't talk out loud you baka. Think about you speaking with me and we can speak. And I merged with you a little. It's just going to heighten your abilities a thousandfold. But you need to get in shape. And for the love of myself don't wear those ridiculous orange jumpsuits. Naruto thought about the things that had happened to him. The beatings he had to endure from the villagers sometimes when they grew frustrated. The shinobi wouldn't do anything against it. It made him so angry that he wanted to rip them apart into bloody bits and then eat those bits and relish in the sweet taste. QB was grinning in her cell. Finally she and her container would once again terrorize this world again and cause much needed destruction. Finally she could show the rest of those pricks that she was the undisputed queen of hell. 
Naruto didn't know it yet, but by giving in to his darker emotions, he would eventually become the monster he had been destined to be, instead of a happy-go-lucky idiot who could only think of Raymon and powerful Jutsu. Naruto looked at the Chuenin responsible for the naming of the teams. He was growing bored. Finally he had managed to select an outfit that made QB agree with the choice. It was a black outfit one of the rare black or other than orange colored clothes he had. He had bought it once to play a prank and had forgotten about it. It looked cool on him. He had accidentally bought something a few sizes too big for him, but that didn't matter now. It fit perfectly now since he had grown since the prank which had been three years ago. When he heard his name being spoken by Aruka he perked up. Yuzumaki Naruto, Haruno Sakura, Ichiha Sasuke. Naruto's eye twitched and he felt anger welling up within him. QB laughed and said. You don't like the Ichiha kid, do you? The anger cropped within you is very powerful. I wish that I could be able to feel the blood splattering all over my body as his body lies on the ground bleeding. Kid you need to promise me one thing. If you ever fight that Ichiha kid let me take over and I'll kill him. Until then I want you to train harder than anyone. I'll take over your training for now and you'll see results soon. Unknown to anyone a smile made its way to Naruto's face. This was not his normal cheerful smile. This was a full-blown maniacal smile which would frighten most people to death. Naruto waited for the Jounin to come pick them up. He had seen a pretty girl wearing a red coat with something that appeared like bandages on it. He filed away her face for now since it possessed such beautiful red eyes. When the Jounin finally appeared Naruto's eyes had taken a red shine and he looked ready to rip the man apart. The man just entered with a casual greeting like he wasn't late at all. Sakura screeched something about being late and Naruto just kept silent. Inwardly he though. Why can't that stupid fish shut up? I'd give a fortune for something to let her shut up. Out loud he said. Why were you so late? Bakashi shrugged and said. I got lost on the route of life. Naruto raised an eyebrow and said. Why don't you tell us something about yourself? After all we had to wait almost three hours before you finally showed up. Bakashi shrugged and said. Let's go to the roof then. We can talk there. Naruto did as he was told and soon he was on the roof with Sakura and Sasuke. Inside his head the voice of the great demon fox was heard. He looks really geeky. Are you sure that he can teach you something? Naruto just looked at the Jounin and said. Alright. You want to tell us what your name is or do we need to go to the old man and force you to quit teaching us because you were late? I remember hearing from Aruka sensei about a shinobi rule that states that a shinobi should always appear on time at any assignment, even if it is a lame one. Bakashi looked at Naruto with a raised eyebrow and said. That is indeed a rule. But that doesn't mean that I uphold that rule. As for introductions. I am hot Aki Kakashi and am a Jounin rank ninja. I have many hobbies and I dislike people who abandon their team. You, Pinky tell me about your likes and dislikes. Sakura looked at the Jounin and said. My name is Haruno Sakura. I like my hobbies are and I dislike Ino Pig and Naruto. She glanced at Sasuke with ever mention of a sentence. The boy was just staring at Kakashi and as Kakashi said that the brooding kid should tell everyone about himself he answered. My name is Ichiha Sasuke. What I like is none of your business. I don't have a hobby, but it is more of an ambition I want to kill a certain man. Bakashi thought about that and said. Alright. Now it's your turn blondie. Naruto's face contorted briefly into a grimace full of anger and hatred and his eyes briefly turned a blood red. Then he regained his control and said. My name is Yuzumaki Naruto, I like Sakura-chan and Raymond. My only dislikes are the time it takes for Raymond to cook in Sasuke team. Bakashi shrugged and said. Tomorrow we are going to hold a little survival training. Be there around 8 o'clock in the morning. And don't eat. You are going to puke it all out if you do. Then he disappeared in a poof of smoke. Naruto looked at his teammates and couldn't help but be disgusted with them. Sasuke was a kid with only vengeance on his mind apparently. He had met Itachi a few years ago when he was still a little kid around 5 years old. Itachi had then been promoted to Anbu leader and had trained him for same time letting him see some of the Anbu techniques. Naruto didn't know why, but Sasuke seemed to be a brooding kid and didn't like to spend time with anyone. The only one that Sasuke looked up to was his older brother. The Ichihas didn't like Naruto being near their house and thus had chased him away a few times. One time Itachi had seen it and then had come to Naruto's house. After eating a bowl of ramen with the kid Itachi had gone back to his house and had left a promise to train Naruto in all, which would become invaluable within time. So Itachi had set out to train Naruto to become a shinobi and had succeeded well. Flashback. The five-year-old Naruto was standing in a clearing with Itachi standing next to him. The older boy who was around 11 at that time spoke up. The thing that is the prime aspect of a shinobi is stealth. Use the shadows to your own skin and you shall be invisible. Naruto nodded and went into a shadow and tried to disappear. Itachi sighed and said. 
You have to make yourself almost invisible to your enemy. Like this. Then Itachi stepped into a shadow and seemingly disappeared. Only a blurry image could be seen. Then he appeared behind Naruto and tickled the younger boy's ribs making the kid laugh. Itachi resumed teaching Naruto about several things that were unmistakable and malevolent at least. Techniques were discussed to make the earth swallow the enemy and immobilize their forces. Apparently Itachi was either thinking that Naruto didn't get the general idea of the lesson, or he was just a genius who thought that Naruto must know as much as he did. And indeed within a few lessons Naruto was able to use a jutsu called Doten. Tsuchi Sutera no Jutsu. It made it possible for him to hide in the earth and then attack from below. Itachi had been proud of his student. So proud that he had taken Naruto out on a small shopping trip and bought him a new set of kunai, coupled with a black jacket and pants. When asked for the reason for buying them the Ichiha air just said. I thought that you should wear something less attention drawing than that orange suit. Black really suits you. Then the Ichiha air had been whisked away by a pair of Anbu who wanted to talk with him about their next mission. Itachi had smiled at Naruto, and the boy had smiled back. Then the Ichiha massacre had happened, and Naruto caught a fleeting look of Itachi as the boy darted over the rooftops and finally disappeared into the forest. Naruto hadn't paid much attention to it, but then he heard about the massacre after a day, and he let a tear fall to the ground. Then flashback. But now was a time for rejoice. He would finally get something done here. With a cry of Doten. Tsuchi Sutero no Jutsu he was hidden in the earth and sneaked upon Sasuke with the idea of pranking him a little. QB snickered in his mind and said. Try this, kid. Then information was suddenly being uploaded into his brains and suddenly he knew a Jutsu which would shock the boy. He appeared out of the ground behind Sasuke and softly he said. Warwick no Jutsu. Sasuke knew that someone was standing behind him and when he turned around he saw a very voluptuous naked woman standing there with a grin on her face. She leaned over and said. You want to have me pretty boy? Then catch me. Naruto in female form jumped at Sasuke, who just did what anyone would do when having another person flying at them with great speed. He extended his arms, and Naruto landed in them and snuggled a little making some blood trickle out of Sasuke's nose. Then Naruto decided to stop playing around, and he rose, and his freeze hit Sasuke's face, and got covered with blood, as Sasuke's nose exploded in a shower of blood. QB grinned in his mind, and she briefly began to rattle the cage she was kept in and shouted. Go get him Naruto. That's my boy. Woohoo. After QB's applause he paused and looked at Sasuke with an evil grin forming on his face. Then he got toward Sasuke and got him out of his clothes and grabbed some rope and then tied him with a rope and hung him off the ceiling clothed in only his boxers. A few hours later the person who found Sasuke was Aruka who had just finished a mission. After hearing the amazing story about the woman Aruka just blinked and shrugged. It wasn't really his concern. Naruto went to bed that night with a devilish smirk on his face, while the yaokai within his mind was partying about something and shouting things like that she would want to get within his pants. Of course Naruto knew nothing of the birds and the bees, or else he would have blushed like crazy. One extremely horny QB no Kitsune sat in her cage within the body of the boy she had grown to like. Going without sex was just as bad as going without killing. Damn she either wanted to kill something or just wanted to have a man pleasure her. Is that too much to ask for her? Sighing she just decided to do it on her own and work off some stress. The dreams that Naruto had did give very much information about the female body. After all when one spirit is bound to another they should be able to watch anything they do. He looked over the clearing and saw that his teammates were already there. Dot he grinned briefly and then shouted. Hi Sakura-chan. Sakura didn't react to that and Naruto faked being hurt by that small gesture. In reality it didn't do much to him except annoy him to no end. The girl should be more professional and not thinking about loving Sasuke or something like that. They should be working like a team or something and not have one girl frowning over a boy. Naruto briefly envisioned a scenario where he was standing all alone while Sakura frowned over a hurt Sasuke and immediately he thought back to his lessons with Itachi-sensei. Flashback. Itachi was standing on the field with a determinate expression on his face. He looked at the student he was training in secret and smiled briefly. It looked so nice to him. Then he started to talk. Teamwork is everything Naruto. It doesn't matter if your mission fails, but if you all work together you shall survive. That is one lesson that I learned when I was a kid. I graduated the academy at 5 and then became a Chunin at 6. Then I got promoted to Jounin 2 years later. And now I am an Anbu captain. I'll teach you techniques to survive in the harsh world which will do nothing but kill you. You know that you have the Kitsune Yaokai sealed within your stomach right? Naruto nodded and said. She often talks to me about things. Like why I should let those villagers beat me into a pulp. She has asked if she could take over my body for a few moments letting her don some damage to them, but I refused. If I did that then I would be killed immediately. 
I got in contact with her when I was five. Itachi nodded and said. Yeah I heard something about you getting beaten up by some villagers. They were killed so I didn't do very much about it. Do you still remember when we met? Naruto grinned and said. Yes. You were walking with that nice girl Anko and talking about something when I accidentally ran into you after running from a mob that was intent on killing me. She really showed them with those snakes coming out of her trench coat. It was so nice to hear their screams. It was like music to my ears to watch them scream as they were biting. Too bad no blood was spilled. I like to see it drop from wounds and then fall to the floor. Are you going to teach me a new technique Itachi sensei? Itachi nodded and said. Watch and learn. Then Itachi did some dragon and tiger seals, coupled with a few fox seals which were done in slow motion for Naruto. Then Itachi shouted. Ninjutsu. Chisio Finshutsu no Jutsu. Then the Kage Bunshin of Itachi began to bleed from all over, letting the red liquid fall to the ground with dull drips. Itachi had made a Kage Bunshin to test this Jutsu on, and Naruto watched the results as the bleeding increased, and then finally the Kage Bunshin exploded in a shower of blood, and then disappeared with a pop and a puff of smoke. Naruto was staring at his teacher with his mouth open and said. Wow. What an awesome technique. Let me try. Itachi nodded and created another Kage Bunshin. Naruto looked at the Kage Bunshin and then began making the seals. As he was finished he shouted. Ninjutsu. Chisio Finshutsu no Jutsu. Then the same thing happened but more violently. Blood began to spurt out of wounds that weren't there and pooled rapidly on the floor. The clone barely had time to make a sound as blood began to pour out of his mouth and then in an eruption which sounded like a thunderclap, it erupted with blood flying high into the air and making a rain of blood come down. Then flashback. Naruto was jerked out of his thoughts as Kakashi arrived. With a shout that he was late together with Sakura, he managed to keep up his idiot facade. When Kakashi explained the test Naruto mentally snorted. With his QB enhanced strength and speed, it would be almost no challenge to him. But still he kept up his facade to be regarded as a dumb idiot like it always planned. QB smiled inside his mind and said. Well kid it seems that you only need to help your teammates. If that's the only thing you need to do then I'll go to sleep. She smiled within her young kid's mind. She was still locked in the cage in his stomach, but found that she was able to enhance certain body parts to her liking. They would probably be written off as puberty happening early, but she liked messing with his body. She had increased his intelligence by several notches, making him capable of inventing genius-like strategies within a second. Then she had tweaked his body a little bit letting him gain more muscle mass. Then she had tampered with his normal human chakra reserves a lot to make them so large that they could be able to channel demonic chakra. Naruto looked at the Jounin that had them do this little test. He was just plain annoyed at the thinly veiled comment that they should work together, and he went over to Sakura to get her to work with him. Come on Sakura-chan. Let's work together and beat Kakashi-sensei. Sakura gave him a cold look and said. Sasuke-kun is far better than you Naruto. Just shut up and watch Sasuke-kun. Then she went back to staring as Sasuke attacked Kakashi. Sasuke was easily blocked, and Naruto jumped out from the hiding place and ran at the Jounin while making seals. Then with a Kage Bunshin he attacked when he had finished some seals and it had appeared. Kakashi didn't show surprise but just dodged the attacks, and Naruto looked at Sasuke and said. Thanks for distracting him. I hope Sakura will do her part. Then he attacked again this time with more gusto, and soon Kakashi was forced to dodge at an accelerated speed, as the punches and kicks were getting faster, and the kunai that were thrown were coming faster and faster. QB was having fun at the moment. She loved showing that lazy Jounin who was boss. And the fact that she was adding her own speed to the boy's body, it would be easy to get the Jounin to accept defeat. Mentally she got some good surprises planned for the Jounin. Once the boy learned her ninjutsu they would be invincible. Now she just cheered on him while wearing something extremely skimpy in nature, like a far too small kimono, which showed a lot of cleavage, which would make Jiraiya blush. After all she had large assets which were bouncing now as she cheered on Naruto. Come on Naruto. Beat that guy's ass. Whip a draw. Naruto watched as Sakura dove in at the Jounin and snatched the bells. She did that probably on Sasuke's order, but it didn't matter. Naruto stopped fighting immediately. Kakashi noticed it and immediately stopped defending too. He was astonished at how the kid could give him a good fight. This was not normal even for a genin who was a dead last. Kakashi stopped and watched as Naruto gave Sakura one of the bells and said. You can eat. I think I'll just go without food for now. The team needs to be at full strength and you need it. She took the food and began eating slowly. Kakashi just stared at the team. They had grasped the meaning of this exercise immediately without him having to tie one to the tree. He blinked a few times and said. You pass. Sasuke looked at their teacher and smirked arrogantly. He hadn't known that the moron could actually let them become true genin by just sharing food. 
It was probably because the kid loved that girl Sakura or something, but Sasuke didn't care. I need to kill my brother as soon as possible. But for that I will need power. As Sasuke thought about his victory that would inevitably follow after killing his brother, he didn't notice that he was about to be left alone by the team members that were walking away. He noticed when Naruto decided to wake him up a little by shouting in his ear. Sasuke team come with us. Sasuke almost fell over at the sound and regained his wit soon and looked at the beating Naruto was given by Sakura, who shouted and screamed at him for shouting in Sasuke-kun's ear. Kyuubi smiled in Naruto's mind. She had finally done something to awaken puberty within Naruto's body, and thus it would grow rapidly. She grabbed herself and moaned deeply. She would need some relief tonight as she had seen a fantasy that was in Naruto's subconscious mind, which had tremendously excited her. It was one of her and him together with whipped cream and some other things. Naruto blushed a beat red as his mind was suddenly bombarded with mental images of naked women, and he briefly gulped as he looked around in the cage that was QB's prison. He looked at the hot naked Kitsune and blushed. She was sitting on a bed with red sheets in the color of blood and was pleasuring herself. When she noticed him she stopped and said. Naruto-kun I want to teach you something every boy should be taught. It is time for the talk. Naruto gulped as he had heard of the talk from his friends. They had just stammered a few times and were uneasy whenever a girl came close to them. He hadn't gotten the idea behind it, but when he woke up that morning he noticed that his underwear was soiled and that he'd have to wash it quickly to get the white stains out of it. QB had taken the initiative and had showed him what exactly she was talking about. It still made him blush at her expert lecture on it. But what she had done to him was rather pleasant. That was all there was to it. Naruto was getting bored. He had to do jobs that weren't suited for a ninja of his caliber. QB had assured him that he should at least be able to do an air rank mission, with the knowledge that was within his mind and the jutsu he could do. The jutsu that were kinjutsu were the jutsu that he could do best. Yaokai jutsu were also very good under his control, as he was able to call up a kage bunshin and endow it with the spirit of QB who took that opportunity. She now created a habit of making herself a kage bunshin and appearing in different places. One time she had surprised him by jumping onto him while he was in the shower. A wrestling match had ensued between the Kitsune and Naruto, which had ended in QB overpowering Naruto by a great margin and him ending up getting slammed into the wall. Iruka had looked at him strangely when he entered a few seconds after that and Naruto had just grumbled something about women being too strong for their own good and had gone back into the shower and had forcibly thrown out QB who slammed into Iruka who got a nosebleed after looking at her big tits. When he had come back to the land of the living he only saw Naruto standing there looking sheepish at him. With a vivid image of Freeze still in his head Aruka asked Naruto. Who was that woman Naruto? I don't think I had the pleasure to meet her yet. And please tell me how the hell she got into your shower. Naruto just stared at him and said. It's none of your business how she got into my shower. And I don't even know how she got in there usually she just sneaks into bed with me. Damn hentai always trying to get me to sleep with her. Aruka just looked stupefied at the scene in front of him. The apparent dope was now holding a small conversation with him about a pervert woman who sneaked into his bed. Since when had the kid been so smart as to actually complain about those things and not just shrug them off as ignorance? Then Aruka finally processed the conversation entirely and said. Why would she sleep with you? A strange grin made its way to the Chunin's face, and Naruto just smirked and said. Sexual intercourse is often referred as sleeping with someone. That's exactly what she tried to do. Don't worry Aruka-sensei. I'll keep her under control. QB snickered within Naruto's mind. He doesn't have a chance in hell if you ask me. He couldn't even stand unto me if I were in heat. Kitsune often needs sex for a long time, and I think that you need some release soon. Then she retreated from his thoughts and Naruto just said. Don't worry Aruka-sensei. I'll take care of her. Are we going for Raymond? Then Naruto cast a game jutsu around Aruka, which would make him believe that everything was just a figment of his imagination. It was a cool jutsu that had been taught to him by someone who hadn't stated his name to Naruto. Naruto had learned it at a very young age. The only thing he could remember from that mysterious sensei was that he had yellow snake-like eyes and black long hair and wore a jounin uniform and that it was a tall man. Naruto just used it on Aruka and got a mental applause from QB and just smiled seemingly at nothing. Then he decided that there would need to be some entertainment and when he got back to his home, he noticed several things. That Kakashi was relaxing in one chair while reading his book. Naruto just sniffed disdainfully and said. The Kakashi sensei. Why are you here? Takashi looked at Naruto and said. Naruto. Hokage-sama has decreed that we are to do a C-rank mission, since we have already done all our assigned missions for this week. We are to protect a man named Tizuna, and we will be expected to leave within 10 minutes. Pack your bags and we'll be off. Naruto nodded and QB came out in a Kage bunshin. 
Her nine tails swung in the air as they flashed and started to fill a small backpack, which was now filled with kunai and other shinobi gear. Soon it was packed and she smirked at him and kissed him on the lips and then disappeared in a poof of smoke. Naruto looked at the place where she had last been and then sighed and slung the backpack over his shoulder and noticed that Kakashi was about to leave and said. Kakashi sensei wait for me. Hakshi nodded at his loud student, never even suspecting that it might be an act. When they reached the gate Sakura and Sasuke were already there with Tazuna. The fat man looked at Naruto and said. Is that little boy going to protect me? I should have hired a team which is more up to the task of protecting me. Kakashi just shrugged while restraining Naruto who was frothing at the mouth with rage. Of course it was all an act, but it seemed real. While threatening the old man with death threats and other things, Naruto just studied the man and noticed that no fear was emitted from the man. Ah well he'd get his chance to make the man fear him. There were two Chuanin from Kurigakur hidden in a small puddle of water, but Naruto didn't pay attention to it. He didn't want to rouse suspicion by knowing about them. As they came up behind him he pretended to act scared like a genin. It didn't matter very much because they were defeated by Kakashi easily. The trip continued and Naruto found himself wishing that something exciting would happen. He looked around for something to do and saw suddenly the shape of a man coming through the trees at speeds of Jounin variety towards them. Naruto knew that this should be a good time to finally get some action and he ducked as a giant sword came from the mist and Kakashi's quickly yelled command to duck saved the lives of Sakura and Sasuke and Tazuna. Naruto just looked at the man who had caught the sword again, and with a smile being hinted at on his lips, Ni grinned a smile not unlike the kitsune which was sealed within him. It didn't have to bed very entertaining to fight with this man, but he knew that he'd have his fun. QB hinted at the presence of someone else nearby, and Naruto took a look at the trees and noticed a Kurigakur hunter nin and relaxed a little. If they were on that guy's trail then he didn't need to show much of his arsenal. As Kakashi ordered them to guard Tazuna a plan formed into Naruto's mind. If Kakashi somehow got distracted, it would allow him to attack the strange guy. Nukinen or not the man must have some technique to help him of course QB could lend her eyes and let him copy it. It was even better than the Sharingan as it allowed him to copy those techniques easily. When the battle was joined Naruto paid close attention to the techniques used and didn't think very much of it. They were just using techniques that normal Chunin could also use. When Kakashi upped the ante a little he was captured within a dome of water, and Sasuik took that as his clue to attack, and when Zabuza conjured up some clones, Sasuke managed to slash one of them, and it fell apart in a watery splash. Sasuke knew that he should get out of the range of the sword that Zabuza had, and was trying to work out a plan to free his teacher. He would learn those techniques that they used even if it killed him. Naruto sighed as he began to gather his chakra. It didn't matter very much to Hai if his teammates died. They were just a distraction along the way to greatness. If the greatness was through terror then so be it. He watched as Sasuke threw a shuriken and then switched himself with a shuriken and became it through a henge. Then he was evaded by Zabuza and then he threw a shuriken at the man, causing him to evade it and release Kakashi. The two Jounin fought with each other and no victor seemed to be decided and suddenly Zabuza was hit in the neck by a pair of Senban needles. Naruto looked at the person who had thrown the needles and immediately sensed something off. This person didn't carry the same feelings of anger for Zabuza, but instead they carried determination to accomplish a goal. He felt himself probing deeper within the strange person's feelings and found a desire to be loved. And also a sadness too deep to describe. The hunter Nin took Zabuza's body away and Tazuna guided them to his home, where they were greeted by a young woman who apparently was his daughter. They were treated well and Naruto was shown a room where he could sleep with Sasuke. Naruto didn't have any intention of hearing the boy rant in his sleep, so Naruto suggested that he sleep over the roof or something. Before the kind woman could say anything a boy that seemed to be around eight interjected with some comment about Naruto and company, all going to die at Gatu's hands. Naruto had given a response in his usual style, namely shouting something about him beating everyone and becoming Hokage, and that the kid should believe in himself. The next days had been filled with exercises to control chakra. Naruto just acted like he couldn't control his chakra, while in truth he was very adept in controlling it. Sasuke and he were progressing along the same lines of both increasing in skill every time they ran up those trees and fell down. Naruto just sighed and tried to climb up again. He could do it perfectly but didn't want them to know about it. He needed to keep his cover until he was sure that he wouldn't be crossed. The sixth day after the meeting with Zabuza was a strange one. Naruto had given up on his training and said that he'd rather relax for a while, until that Zabuza dude got back. Kakashi had told them that the hunter Nin was an accomplice of Zabuza, who had taken him somewhere to recover. Naruto looked at the girl that came up to him while wearing a pink kimono. She had her hair cascading over her back. She looked cute San Naruto smiled as he looked at her and said. Hello. She greeted him politely, and Naruto couldn't help but ask her why she was here. 
Why are you here? I don't think it's safe for a pretty girl like you out here. She smiled at him and said. I can protect myself. Tell me something. Have you ever had a person who is so precious that you want to protect him or her with your life? Naruto briefly thought about it and said. Yes. She and I are closer than anyone. She and I are bound together by an ancient jutsu. I know that she loves me and I love her with my soul. She's been a mother to me and a lover. She is closer to me than anyone else at the moment. With time it could change, but we'll always be bound to each other. She looked at him strangely and said. I hope that I and my precious person can also be so happy. I would like to protect him with my life if the situation called for it. He was the only one to accept me for who I am. Naruto just looked at her and said. Is he Mamachi's Abusa? Haku's eyes momentarily widened in shock but then narrowed. So you know about my precious person. Do you know why I saved him from your sensei? Naruto smiled at her and said. The only thing that I know is that your master isn't a real demon. The only demon I know of was the QB no Kitsune. Why you follow him and saved him is easily explained. You care for him. Don't worry I won't tell anything of this to Kakashi. He probably is off training the Achea. He doesn't know the mental trouble that I go through every moment. Haku relaxed slightly and said. Well then what do you intend to do about the battle that would inevitably follow the confrontation between my master and your sensei? If he tries to kill my master then I would have to rescue him. Naruto looked at her with a serious look on his face and said. As long as I draw breath I shall protect everyone who is intent on harming anyone close to me. Even strangers I would protect. But no Kanoha citizen will be safe from my wrath. They have made me out to be a monster. If they make me that way then I shall become one. After all my precious person is the yaokai sealed within my stomach. Aku processed most of the information that had been given in the conversation, and she paid heed to the words that the QB was one of the only yaokai that the boy was familiar with, and added it all up together, and came to one conclusion that was immediately spoken. You have the great Kitsune yaokai QB sealed within your stomach. They sealed it within a child. Indeed that would be called a precious person. Even if it is a yaokai it still can be called a precious person. But we are slipping off topic. Tell me your name. Naruto nodded and said. My legal name is Yuzumaki Naruto. My personal name I give myself is Naruto the Yaokai King, as in essence, I am royalty with the Queen of Yaokai sealed within me. QB added something in his head. That's the most gorgeous Yaokai Queen for you kid. No matter what you say about me my title is QB, Queen of the Nine Hells. Naruto frowned and said. Her official title is QB, Queen of the Nine Hells. Haku just looked at him and said. Well my name is Yukikage Haku. Pleased to meet you Yaokai-san. Naruto grinned at her with his foxy grin and said. Call me Naruto. And the Yaokai-san can be left away as I don't use that title yet. Haku just smiled kindly and said. When do you expect to be able to care for your precious person if you have no physical person to care for? No love for him or her just for some spectral being within you and bound by seals. Naruto thought about it and said. Well then if I got a girlfriend or someone like that I would be able to care for him or her. Then they would be called a precious person. Their conversation about precious person and various things progressed until the sun was high up in the air, and Haku remembered that she should go back to her master. After all it wouldn't do for her master to remain without his tool for long. When she got back to Zabuza she got an inquisitive look and immediately told the man what had happened. Mamachi Zabuza was a clever man. He was able to kill all the genins of the mist exam without him being one. That gave him his nickname Demon of the Mist. He opened his eyes after he had closed them to think better. Then he said. So it seems that she nodded and within mere seconds they were gone. Naruto in the meanwhile had come upon the idea to create his own comic book which he eagerly started working on. He knew that it wasn't perfect, but at least with QB's help he could try. You need to accentuate the busts of the female characters a little bit Naru-kun. That way it would be far more effective than simply making them as huge as possible. There are some men who like that but I don't. I like women who have frieces that are nice and soft and not like melons. Like mine for instance. She jumped once and made her freests bounce once. Naruto just smiled and drew the motion within the comic, and soon the lead character Akiko was clothed within Jounin uniform and was currently engaged in battle with a group of stone nin. She defeated them and when she got back she got rewarded. The drawings were of such detail that Naruto forgot to add the normal censure like it was usual in perverted books. When Kakashi came to see where his loudmouth student was he was drawn to the side of Naruto drawing within a small notebook. What are you drawing? Naruto turned around and saw his Jounin sensei. He looked at the man and said. Just some drawings Kakashi sensei. He hid the book within the folds of his clothes and then got up and said. When are you going to teach me a new jutsu, Kakashi sensei? Sometime later Naruto. Now let's go back to Tsunami-san and Tazuna-san. Hi sensei. They went back to the bridge builder's home and Naruto ate a lovely meal prepared by Tsunami. 
The next day would be the one that Zabuza was going to show up and Naruto was almost giddy with excitement. He looked at the house where he had been left because he had to take care of some things. The hiding of his comic wasn't very easy. He went outside and saw two men harassing Tsunami. A grin grew on his face and within two milliseconds the man had a kunai lodged right between the eyes. They fell over dead and Naruto just grinned and his eyes turned red. Let's give them a taste of the power of Naruto and QP chan Naruto grinned and he jumped onto a tree and started to run as fast towards the bridge that was being built. When he got there he looked at the scenery and noticed Kakashi fighting with Zabuza and Sakura guarding Tazuna. The wee child was even looking scared at the prospect of having to fight a Jaun and Nukunin. Naruto just looked at the scene of Sasuke trying to fight the pretty girl named Haku. A smile appeared on his face as it seemed that Sasuke was going to be beaten. But the speed that was close to being a blur he jumped into the mirrors and he looked at every reflection of Haku. A pity that we are on opposite sides. It would be nice to see you in another situation, but this means that I got to fight. Naruto got in a ready stance and was about to launch an assault on the mirrors, but Sasuke just looked at him and said. Stuff a dope. I can handle this guy by myself. Naruto watched as Sasuke was being filled with senbin needles like some sort of pincushion, and he smiled. Too bad that you don't have a yaokai within you Haku. It would have been a pretty nice thing to see them duel. Haku just gave a mysterious smile and said. This technique is the demonic ice mirrors. I got one sealed up within me, but it isn't very visible to the outside. It was done by sealing it within my inner coils. I think that yours is being bound by some sort of death seal am I correct? Naruto just nodded after getting a small mental fragment of comment by QB involving something about sealing methods. When he saw icy spikes come from the mirror he knew that it wasn't very healthy to be caught within them, and with a piercing yell the sound vibration shattered the ice, and the chakra from the Kyuubi shot out from the seal and demolished the mirrors. Haku tried to drop down on Naruto with an ice spike to impale him. He looked at her and suddenly Kyuubi spoke up in his mind. Want me to help you a little. This could be fun. She has one of the ice dragons within her if I'm not mistaken. It looks like the coils are frozen. It didn't look odd to me at first when we met her, but now it all clicks together. Let's warm the girl up a little. A manifestation of chakra appeared and nine tails wrapped around the girl falling down at Naruto. It looked odd to see a girl of around 15 being wrapped up within blood red chakra, but to the spectators it was a horrific sight. They waited until the girl was ripped apart by the chakra, but that moment never came. Instead the clothes incinerated by some unseen heat and the air was sucked out from the region, making Haku fall into unconsciousness due to the sudden loss of air and pressure of air. Naruto looked around and felt the chakra of people standing just on the opposite side of the bridge. Zab Yuza and Kakashi got distracted and looked at the battle Kakashi was still in an attacking pose. Batu talked about getting rid of some Nukunin thrash and Zab Yuza took offense to his slight jab at Haku. Pity she was so rude as to break my arm. I'm sure the men would love to have her as a slave for their hard work. Naruto's and Zabuza's eyes twitched at that statement and intense killing intent came from the both of them, although Naruto toned his down somewhat. It wouldn't do to make the prey die of a heart attack. Zabuza was the first to move. With an almost bestial growl he charged at Gatu with a kunai he got from Naruto who had thrown it in some attempt to hurt the man. Although Naruto hadn't really aimed to kill the man had grabbed it with his mouth and he charged into the crowd of men and slashed while getting cut by a blade that one of the hirelings wielded. Finally Zabuza got to Gatu and looked into the man's eyes. Then he cut upwards and Gatu's neck was sliced open. Chakra molded itself into a pattern very reminiscent of a demon and Gatu fell into the waves. Zabuza collapsed. Naruto looked at the horde of men that were currently about to go and destroy the country of waves. Bakashi made about 50 kage bunshin and Naruto did the same. The hirelings looked at the horde of clones and gulped. It would be suicide to go against so many at once. A crossbow bolt embedded itself in front of the hirelings, and Inari appeared with a horde of wave countrymen armed with pitchforks and other weaponry. The men fled for their lives and jumped into the water just to get away. Naruto smiled as he knew that Kakashi deserved some rest. He looked around and saw Haku's limp body. He went over and picked up her unconscious body. He got out of his jacket and draped it over her body. She shouldn't get sick or else she might die. Sentimental, kid. It seems that you carry some sort of affection for the girl. As long as she doesn't kill you it's okay with me. Naruto just gave a wry smile and he looked around to see if Pinky was somewhere and there he saw her fussing over Sasuke. Couldn't the pink fish see that her precious Sasuke wasn't in need of her care. Tazuna was the one who needed to be protected at all costs. He carried Haku over towards the motionless body of Mamachi Zabuza. He looked at the man and sighed. How the hell was he going to explain this to the girl? Sorry but your master died. Would you commit suicide or would you let us kill you? He noticed the slight heaving of the chest area that indicated that Zabuza was still alive. He looked at it and said. 
Zabuza san can you hear me? The man lifted his head weakly and said with a voice that was totally unlike his normal confident one. You're the kid that beat Haku. Come to finish me off kid. Naruto just would shook his head and said. No. I know that you are going to die and can do nothing to help you get better. All I want to do is give Haku one last chance to say goodbye. He did a medical jutsu he had learned from QB to wake the unconscious or the drained of energy and let them work once again for 15 minutes, but then they would need to rest for a day. Haku awoke and looked at the sky. Then the memories came back and she looked around and saw her master. Zabuza-sama. He looked at her and said. Haku my end is drawing near. I want you to go and live your life to the fullest. What's your name kid? Yuzakmaki Naruto I presume it is. At Naruto's nod Zabuza continued. I'd like you to take care of Haku for me. Care for her well and make her happy. That's all I ask. Haku had tears streaming down her face and Naruto made a small soothing noise. He looked at Zabuza again and said. I'll make sure that you get buried properly and make sure that it isn't desecrated by those hunter nin. Zabuza-san, I'll take care of Haku like she were one of my precious persons, and in time she may become just that. I hope you will find happiness in the afterlife. Zabuza closed his eyes and breathed his last breath. A smile was on his face, and Naruto closed the man's eyes. He stared at the body for a few seconds before the tears came. QB and Naruto might be cold and heartless, but this was such a touching moment that it would stay etched within their memories forever. The love for a student that was so overpowering that the teacher would risk his life for the student. Zabuza was buried without the knowledge of Kakashi. Haku had hid the moment that Sasuke awoke with Zabuza's body, and the next day while Kakashi was recovering Zabuza was buried in a private ceremony just between Naruto and Haku. He looked at the grave which was marked by the huge katana that Zabuza used and then began to make demonic seals. Soon a barrier appeared around the grave which would only allow two people inside. Naruto and Haku. If they died it would become totally sealed off to any human while keeping the grave intact against anyone and against time. Naruto told Haku that she should wait in the surroundings and then join up with the group later after she got a change of clothing. The clothes that she used for battle were just a little bit too familiar to Sasuke and Kakashi. With her hair long and in a different style, then it should be okay for her to travel with them. Haku nodded and got the pretty kimono out of the bag she awed with her. Is this good? Then I can wear my hair long and without something keeping it up. Naruto nodded. See you later Haku-chan. This was only the beginning of the turbulent times that Kanoha would face when the QP no Kitsune would reawaken. She looked at the road ahead and noticed that it looked like there were some people coming. She knew that Naruto-kun had asked her to go and wait for them here. She looked at the sky and marveled at the beauty of it. She always felt so at peace staring at it. She looked at the road again, and there she saw the familiar head of blonde hair with the perverted guy that was hot Aki Kakashi walking next to the brooding guy she had defeated just three days ago. A tear slid down her cheek as she thought back to the fight between Zabuza and Gatu's mercenaries. He had died to defend her honor. The pink-haired girl looked to be ecstatic about something, and when they came within earshot she picked up a fragment of what the girl was saying. Kun why not go out with me on a date when we get back in the village? No. The kid seemed to be getting colder than ever. Haku wondered how she would be able to stand the little brat. Sure Naruto-kun might provide her with someone to talk about loss. She had the great dragon Ryu Mizajiri sealed within her from birth. It came with a bloodline limit that a dragon of the icy kind had to be sealed within the air of the clan, and even because her mother hadn't wanted her to become one of the members of the clan she couldn't refuse it and had actually used the pendant that contained the spirits of ice dragons and had sealed one into her. When they reached her she looked at Naruto and he nodded and walked over to her. Hi miss. What are you doing here all by yourself? Just traveling towards Kanahagakur for a change of scenery kid. Naruto apparently decided that he should act like some untrained bumpkin and shouted. Don't call me kid. I'm going to be the Hokage one day. Naruto looked at her and let a small smile slip to his face. He looked exactly like the dumb moron everyone thought him to be and was currently one of the most powerful shinobi from his age group that he had met. Sure he couldn't beat Kakashi easily, but with some amount of skill, he could beat the genin easily, even without relying on QP's power. Said pervert was looking at the pretty girl and perverted thoughts were running through his head as he said. We are from Kanahagakur and are just returning from a mission. Would you like to travel with us young lady? She let a blush slip onto her face and said. I cannot pay for your help mister. I don't have any money with me since my sensei died. The Kashi looked at her and found that there was something familiar about her, but couldn't think of it at the moment. For all he knew she could be one of those porn stars he had read about in the latest issue of that magazine that was especially made for men who liked to look at women, especially conditioned in the right areas, and would fuck for money. She looked at the man and winked at him making the older pervert turn red with the ecky thoughts he got. Sure we'll protect you miss. 
The answer from Kano has number one technique specialist, surprised Sasuke a little, but when he looked at her a little better he said. You are that boy I fraud against. Naruto knew that Sasuke had said something that would incite Haku to go on to a homicidal killing spree. He watched as her eyes took on a blue tint and the temperature in the area chilled to the point that several on the grass leaves were frozen. She looked at the Ichiha brat and said at a tiny that was as cold as the freezing air around her. A boy you say? Does this look like a boy's chest to you? Then she grabbed the front part of her kimono and ripped it open. Freeze bounced a little as the kimono was opened and the undershirt momentarily disappeared with a small burst of kitsune chakra that was dispensed without the jounin noticing. Bakashi stared once at the student of Zabuza's chest before keeling over in a dead faint. The sight of real live flesh was just too much for his perverted senses. Even if he was an open pervert he never met a girl which exposed the freests in public. Sasuke was stunned at the display. As Haku was standing close he reached forwards and touched one of the freests incidentally the right one and squeezed it. The look that came from Haku's eyes could have killed men who were so dumb as to mention Fadis in the presence of Chaoji. Then Sasuke's nose erupted in a geyser of blood splattering Haku's pink kimono. Looking at what Sasuke had done and then at the still raging female fury, Naruto decided to watch the show as he saw Pinky come up and start harassing Haku. And yes the girl was really mad at Haku-chan. You black-haired slut. How dare you expose your chest at Sakun? Was the first sentence that came out of Sakura's mouth and Haku's undershirt reappeared as the Kitsune Chakra did its magic again. Haku straightened out her kimono and looked at the girl and then at the two unconscious guys. Kakashi's mask was bloody with all the blood that had left the nose of the man and was now streaming down his neck. Haku wondered if she had actually shown something like her genitals to the man if he would have died from blood loss. Now the underdeveloped girl had to say something about it. Why do you call me a slut? If the Ichiha kid had asked you to suck him off would you do it? Sakura looked at that confused. Why would I suck on Sasuke? It's not like he is some sort of lollipop. You stay away for my Sasuke-kun. Haku just snickered and began to look another way. Shut up Pinky I'm thinking of a way to get your stupid gay crush to wake up. Naruto-kun please help me help hot Aki-san to get up. Naruto was about to go and help her put Kakashi in a sitting position, but Sakura interrupted his movement by saying. Now you are going after Naruto Baka too. You really are such a slut that you would happily go and show your tits to him too. Haku just glared at the girl and said. Listen Pinky. If he isn't complaining then it must either mean that he's used to you calling him a baka or that he just is too stupid to acknowledge the fact that you are a no-talent shinobi you should get executed the moment she exited the academy. In Kurigakur it was totally different. You had to beat the student you were assigned to into a pulp unless you wanted to get beaten into a pulp. I'll shows you why I was one of the most feared of the Kurigakur hunter nin little girl. Ever heard of the ice dragon of Kurigakur? It is a good thing that I don't got any mission to kill you or else I would have ripped you apart the moment I laid eyes on you. Naruto just grinned like an idiot. She sure is protective of you isn't she? This might get interesting. I think this is what humans classify as a rivalry or a catfight that might occur any moment. If Kakashi doesn't wake up soon he's gonna find a bloody student of his. Humans are so weak when they see the barest hint of flesh. Hey I'm human and yet you have deemed me worthy of being your mate. Baka. Did you forget that we are one now? When we first met you accepted the change that made you a demon. By the way I think that you should apologize for the insult of thinking that I would have let a human have sex with me. You are giving head tonight instead of me. Naruto watched the proceedings with the pink-haired girl and Haku as they glared at each other. Bakashi woke up a few hours later and Sasuke was carried by Sakura as she still sent glares. That night they made camp and Kakashi said that Kanahagakur was still a day walking from the position they were at. There were three tents. One for Kakashi one for Sasuke and Naruto and one for Haku and Sakura. The girls had similar twitches in their eyes and they vowed to kill the other if they made a peep during the night. The next day Haku came to the discovery that somehow she had fallen asleep and was now currently nestled against the blonde demon carrier who was still sleeping soundly. Where Sasuke was could only be one big question mark. She looked at the sleeping kid and decided to have some fun. Gently she took her hair and mussed it up like she had a wild night. With a devious grin on her face she exited the tent to find Kakashi getting out of his own and then freeze as he saw her get out of the tent that was definitively not the girl's tent. A squeal of joy was heard and Kakashi turned his head to the girl's tent only to find Sasuke shooting out of it with a rapid pace which only the morbidly embarrassed could. He was currently naked as the day he was born and in possession of a blush on his face. Kakashi could only watch as he knocked Haku down and scooted into the tent. Not pleased with a naked boy crawling over her. She looked back and saw Sasuke in the process of putting on some boxers. Noticing that Naruto's face currently was adorned with an almost diabolical smile she grinned too and got out of the tent. Naruto followed mere minutes after that. 
We had fun didn't we Narukun? Making sure that the pink girl got naked into that tent and then placing a chair next to her equally naked must have been a dream of her for a long time. I wonder how the parents of Pinky are going to take the fact that she had slept with a naked boy. By the way you are much larger than the Ichiha in size. Naruto grinned and looked at Kakashi, who had a look of utter astonishment on his face and clearly was shocked by the prank he had done. With a smile eerily reminiscent of a certain Kitsune Yaokai sealed within his belly, he walked towards his sensei and grabbed a face mask and pulled it down and finally looked at his sensei's face. With a grin matching Naruto's Haku looked at hot Aki Kakashi. She looked at a relatively normal face which could have been called cute if someone ever got to see it. Then the man pulled it up again and looked at her. He raised an eyebrow at her and Naruto but didn't comment on it. Haku ate breakfast calmly while Sakura was still hyper like a schoolgirl after looking at Sasuke's reproductive organs. The way back was slightly uneventful and as they were only three hours walking away from Kanoha's gates, Haku had enough of the girl. If she made another comment about how fantastic Sasuke-kun was or how much of a Baka Naruto-kun was she was going to teach the girl a lesson that she wouldn't forget very soon. You Baka. You insult Sasuke-kun again you Baka then I will kill you. She had enough of the constant shouting of the girl and grabbed Sakura by her throat and said. Shut up. Your Winovus is irritating me. All she got in response was a kick to the stomach and soon the fight was on. Haku grabbed the hair of the younger girl and pulled onto it, making the pink brat scream in pain while punching Haku right in the face. Naruto just watched the fight with a stunned look on his face. Sakura actually lost some parts of her hair that were ripped out. Haku sported several marks on her face which looked to be bruised. On the side of Sakura he saw a split lip and several injuries that looked like they would remain for a while, as the bruises were a lot worse than Haku had. And once again he watched the struggle between the girls as they once again rolled on the floor, beating out the shit of each other. He guessed this must be the catfight he had heard other guys talk about when he had overheard some of them on occasion. They talked about a catfight going as far as the girls forgetting their shinobi nature and just brawling. It seemed as if they were brought back to their most primal instincts and just wanted to harm each other. He finally separated them by doing an improved sexy no jutsu that he had made after watching the fight. He could use it to knock out anyone he pleased, but it was kinda embarrassing. He looked exactly like the fourth Hokage, but with whisker marks and a gorgeous build. Aku had blushed as red as a tomato and had then stopped fighting with an unconscious Akura, whose mind had gone into an unconscious state after seeing an exceptionally handsome man. Naruto had grinned and made himself useful by grabbing her hand and helping her up. Then he grabbed Sakura and they had all walked towards Konoha. Off to the village that was going to be the victim of the demons. He looked at the gates and with a grin on his face, he entered the village with a small group behind him following him. The moment he passed through the gates he was subject to the hateful stares of the Chuanin who guarded the gates. Naruto looked as if he didn't notice the glares and just walked along happily while his mind was busy with devising new ways to torture someone with only a small plastic knife. His mind began on a downward spiral as he began to think up ways to mutilate someone without even lifting as much as a finger, but letting Chakra do the mutilation. But then he'd have to be in contact with someone or something like that. It didn't matter to him anymore, but for his continued survival, he had to keep up the facade of a dumb child with mediocre skills. He looked at the streets that were littered with humans. How dare they even glare at him. The Yandai Mei had said that he was to be a hero, and they treated him like he was their worst enemy. Although that was the truth although the villagers didn't know that yet. She looked at the bars of the cage that was the seal and then looked to the side which had a previously hidden room with a mysterious occupant in it. The mysterious person looked at her and said. Did you really have to do that to him? She smirked a foxy smirk and said. Why not? He likes it and I like it. And it's not as if I don't help him from time to time. Would you care to look at his life for a few hours and see how he has grown? The mysterious person nodded and QB let her senses disappear, form the boy to let the mysterious person look from Naruto's eyes. Why the person was here she didn't know. The only thing she knew was that he was irritating. He watched through the eyes of the kid that was his container and the container for the QB and saw the glares thrown at Naruto by the older generation and even the younger. He saw all the disgust in the looks of the people of Konoha and even some ninja glared at Naruto. He looked sideward and saw the lazy Jounin and the girl with the pink hair. Another girl wearing a pink kimono was walking with him, and the person could feel the feelings within this body for the girl. Naruto looked at Haku and felt something tighten within his chest. He didn't know what it was, but thinking about QP evoked the same feelings. He just silently observed them as it served as a great distraction from the glares. He gently studied the curves of her face and the form of the body. He sighed as he looked at Sakura who was glaring at Haku. Wouldn't the girl learn from her mistakes that it wouldn't be very healthy to attack someone who had been ranked as a nukenin? 
but the small smile on his face he went into the building where they got their missions assigned and looked at the various teams that were assembled there. It didn't look like there were many teams currently receiving or returning missions. Zeratobi looked at the new entrance, and mentally he was happy to see a smile on Naruto's face. It was quite rare to see a genuine smile on that kid's face. Zeratobi knew all about masks and the like from his own time of training under the Nai and Shou Daimei. He knew how to distinguish sadness or happiness within every movement of the face. Then he looked at the rest of the people that followed him inside. Kakashi wasn't much of a surprise as he was once again reading his dirty novel. The pink-haired Haruno child was also no surprise. The next person made Saratobi's breath hitch for a moment. How the hell could he have missed this pretty girl? She looked so good and probably must have a good figure beneath that kimono as well. Naruto looked at the old man and mentally evaluated the old man. He was one of the few that treated him like a human being, and for that Naruto was grateful. Maybe he should put off destroying Konoha until the old man was dead. He didn't know why he was thinking that line, but he knew that it somehow made sense. If only he was sent on a mission without a high-profile Jounin with him, then he might be able to make a breakthrough with the seal and release her into the world once again. The slightly pensive look that was on Naruto's face showed that he wasn't paying much attention, and when he bumped into someone he was jerked from his musings. He smiled sheepishly as he looked at the desk where the Hokage sat. Hokage Jiasen I made something for you. But that he reached within his clothes and pulled out a small booklet that looked like it was some sort of instructional manual. The Hokage being intrigued at the contents opened the booklet and the real cover came into view. It was a magnificent drawing of a girl with green eyes and purplish hair which was standing in a suggestive pose. It took most of his willpower not to let his nose explode in blood as he flipped the next page. Satratobi chuckled and said. It looks very nice Naruto-kun. Have you tried going to a publisher yet? This is magnificent work. Naruto just grinned sheepishly and said. I just got back Hokage Jison. And I doubt that anyone would publish something I made. The old man chuckled and said. Well then I think I'll take this to a publisher later today, and we'll see about keeping you anonymous. This is almost better than the work of my old student. Bakashi walked over to the Hokage and glanced at the booklet. A small choke gasp came from his mouth, and a few seconds later a perverted giggle came from his mouth. Ma Naruto you should really publish that one. So that's what you were working on. I wondered about that. Then he turned to Hokage-sama and said. Hokage-sama Team 7 is reporting back from our mission to Wave Country. We brought with us one new Knin who after the death of her master has followed us. It appears like she is willing to join our village. Tsuritobi looked her over once and said. Kakashi what rank would she get if she joined us now? At least high level Chunin or even Jounin. She displayed rather impressive skill that was equal to her teacher Mamachi Zabuza. Alright then it's settled. Miss would you please state your name? She looked at the old man who was smiling kindly at her and nodded. She stated her name and looked at the old man who just smiled. Well then Miss Yukikage, I think I'll list you as a Jounin with medical capabilities. If you'd like to join the Hunter Nin squad then I suppose that can be arranged. Haku just nodded and said. I live with the person my master appointed to me before his death. Without further ado she walked back behind Naruto and took a pose which looked like a relaxed one, but you could see the muscles being tense so that any attack could be anticipated. Naruto looked at the proceedings and missed the small smile that the Hokage wore. Kakashi I want you and your team to accompany Kurinai's team on a mission to Sunagakur. I think there might be some hindering factors on the road to it and I want you to accompany them to make sure there is enough protection for the scroll. Hi Hokage-sama. Sandeami just smiled and said. Get a good night of sleep and I'll hand you the scroll tomorrow. Bakashi nodded and Naruto gave a sigh of relief. He looked at the Hokage and said. Hokage Jiasen I trust you to bring it to a publisher and keep my name a secret. Although if my name is to be printed on the book then let them write Yuzurum Naritoki. The Hokage just chuckled. Making a slight word play on your name? Alright I'll tell them that's the name of the author. I think it'll be published within the week. And thanks for letting me read it. No problem Hokage-sama. With that he walked out of the room with Kakashi and Sasuke following. Sakura had stood there just gaping at the casual way he had brushed off the Hokage. Then she too followed behind them. Haku had disappeared the moment Naruto first set one foot outside of the room. Naruto looked at the interior of his apartment and realized that it would take some time to clean this up. He set to work with Haku helping him. She got the empty Raymond pack of gaze and the rest of the dirt while he was busy setting up a futon and other things. After half an hour they had cleaned it all, and Haku looked at the blonde yakai container. She sat at the table, and Naruto was about to put down his cloth which he had used to dust off the dust that had collected itself. In the local publisher's office a meeting between the Hokage and the publisher was in progress. The man simply had taken one look at the book and leafed through it before exclaiming that it had to be published and would be in stores the next day. 
The next day the teams made their way to the gate where they met up with each other, and Kakashi got a scolding from Sakura for being late once again without a valid excuse. With a grin on his face Naruto set out from the gates while constantly being talked to by a girl with wide eyes that always seemed to be looking at him. He looked at the Jounin leading the other team and noticed that she had pretty red eyes but somehow couldn't recall her name. It didn't matter anyway since she had just ordered Kakashi to go and put that damn piece of filth that is called a book away or else I'll make sure that it gets in a very uncomfortable place. Kakashi immediately shut up and ordered the Jenin to go. Naruto looked at the sky as they walked the road that would lead them to Sunagakur. It didn't tea matter very much to him that there were other people around him, but he'd rather be free and wild. His instincts told him that if he ran free without clothing that there would be almost no difficulties reaching Sunagakur. Clothing is so restrictive. The QB was once up to her normal mischief as she sent a mental image of a woman undressing towards Naruto through their connection they have. Did you have to do that? Naruto was a little bit peeved at the QB for sending him that image, so a little part of himself had stiffened and was becoming uncomfortable. Sighing Naruto got out a pen and some paper and made himself busy by beginning to draw the female curves first and then adding the other features of the woman he was drawing for the cover of his next book. Soon he had a nice girl drawn on the picture and then he began to think about how the plot should be. At least there should be something in it that would truly be nice to his readers and even if Kano had got eradicated that it would still be a beloved book in the rest of the shinobi world. With the cover drawn he looked at it and saw the girl he drawn standing there in a nurse's outfit with a seductive look on her face. Her black hair was long and hung over her shoulders, while her brown eyes looked at everyone with an intrigued grin as scenes began to pop into his head. The main character would be a demon hunter who was resting at an abandoned castle where he would get attacked by ghouls and other undead creatures. He'd beat the most of them and then get injured near his left thigh. That injury would cause him to go to a village which has a hospital in it where a nurse takes pity on him and would start caring for him. Naruto was in the process of drawing a scene where the demon hunter would be getting his injury while keeping an eye on the surroundings. At the moment he wasn't detecting anything suspicious, but he moved his vision from the paper towards the people that were around him, and he took note of one thing. That Jounin sensei from the wide-eyed girl had a damn fine ass. He looked at it and studied it for use in other stories. He grabbed his pencil and began sketching the next scene where the creatures would be beaten by a sword slash. He actually drew the lines well and made several dark colorations before he was quite rudely interrupted. What are you doing dope? The dog using guy had come up to him and had looked at his work. Naruto was actually considering going to maim the kid for doing that, but he made some good efforts with keeping his temper. That is a thing I am working on. It currently is the second book I will be publishing. That got dog boy's attention. As well as the rest of the teams which crowded around the blonde demon carrier. Naruto was tempted to use some kinjutsu on them all but restrained himself. Instead he looked at teammates Jown and Sensei and said. What's your name miss? I'm sorry but I forgot it. A kind smile was aimed at him and she said. I'm sorry but I probably forgot to introduce myself to your team or something. I think Sasuke-san knows me since I and Kakashi met up yesterday as well as Sakura-san, but you weren't present. I think it had something to do with your house I think. My name is Yuhi Kurenai. Pleased to meet you. Naruto looked at her and said. Pleased to meet you too. My name shall not be revealed due to the fact that the mentioning of my name would cause people to go into shock. An amused grin slipped onto her face and she said. You'll tell me that name, won't you? Naruto grinned and said. She's better than you at trying to coerce answers out of someone. Promise me with a blood oath that you'll never tell anyone my name. The mysterious person sighed within the cage. He never knew that the kid knew how to let someone swear a blood oath. You told him about the oath didn't you? Why of course. Why not mess with the pretty woman's head? He should have some real action in the real world and not with me through the seal. Alright if you know what you are doing then it's fine with me. This is all a test for Konoha. Should they fail then utter annihilation will be dispensed upon them. Then the mysterious person went to go and lie down on the floor of the cage with the QB watching through Naruto's eyes. Why would the kid want her to swear a blood oath on it? Those oaths were usually made by Jounin who swore not to divulge anything of the mission or else they would be exiled from the country they belonged to. Usually they died when they divulged the information because it could only be gotten through torture. Blood oaths were incredibly rare, and to the current date, there were only a few shinobi who had tried to make blood oaths to their respective leaders. The last person who had made a blood oath had been dead for about 90 years was the original history books. She looked at the kid strangely and continued walking with Kakashi thinking it over in her mind. Why wouldn't the kid tell her his name? From the file she got on the kid like every jown and got one about the QB container she knew that the kid was called Yuzumaki Naruto and that he was decent at Tejutsu and his ninjutsu was his best area. Almost no talent for Gain Jutsu. She looked at the kid and saw a happy smile on his face. 
She looked at it closely and could see several layers of Genjutsu on the facial area. She thought back to the report and thought about the Genjutsu thing. If he knows how to cover his face with several Genjutsu, then he has something to hide. While she was thinking it over Naruto knew that it would be hard to hide the fangs he suddenly sported. Why the hell did he even think about telling that woman his name? True it wasn't Yuzumaki Naruto that was his true name. QB and he had figured that if he had merged with QB slightly elevating him to Yakai status, then he'd no longer be able to bear his human name. And thus she had christened him Naruto QB no Kitsune. Naruto the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox. His nine tails had grown overnight while he was sleeping. Naruto had hidden his blood-red eyes and tails with some incredibly advanced gain, Jutsu the QB had learned him, which should be able to withstand several attempts at dispelling it before the user would even need to think about replacing it. When they walked through the desert that was between them and Sanugakura Naruto's eyes flashed dangerously as he detected some chakra leaking out of the sand. Immediately he jumped away and a claw made from sand appeared where he had stood only mere moments ago. A boy around his age could be seen rising from the sand with a menacing look on his face. Bakashi and Kurenai got into a fighting position but the boy had only eyes for Naruto. You you possess a power that makes mother afraid. Shina, Sabaku Kayu. Sand began to envelop his legs and he struggled to get free. Hey it's Shukaku-chan. Why doesn't that old fuck just give up and leave me alone? I told him so many times that I will never give up in my quest to go and kill him. And that Gaki thinks Shukaku is his mother? Naru-kun you're up for a tough fight. May I please ask that you transform into your yaokai state or perchance even summon me. Naruto mentally grumbled something about not wanting the surprise to be ruined for Konoha. The sand had now enveloped him, and the kid was about to perform the killing move, but suddenly a barrier of sand sprung up around him as a kunai was embedded at the barrier. The kid looked at his attacker and said. It's no use. He will die Sabaku Sozo. The sand was now crushing his body, and he felt the air being slammed out of his lungs. It became hard to breathe all of a sudden, and he could do nothing but release the magnificent power of the QB no Kitsune into the world. The red aura engulfed the sand, and it was suddenly blasted apart with force, and a figure appeared from the sand. The blonde hair was now longer and the clothing had changed. The clothes were now a long black coat and a uniform beneath it, which was visible to the onlookers, because the coat was slightly opened. The face looked mature instead of the boyish one. The blue eyes that had once shone with great vitality into the world were now a blood red, while loaded with anger and hatred for humans in general. So he has used my body to try to get out of the confines of that sand dome. I should have guessed that since we resemble each other so much that he'd be able to draw out my original looks. Maybe he can even awake his Kekai Genkai without too much trouble. After all his mother was one of the strongest of her clan. True. She was a marvelous woman. But thanks to those stuck-up bastards she didn't remember having birthed him in the first place. Now she was married to that stuck-up prick. Married. Mikoto-chan would never have left me even if I was locked in here with you. The shithead used some advanced gain jutsu memory wipe on her the moment it was confirmed you were dead. After all she was his cousin and their precious blood had to be preserved. He cast several gain jutsu to make her look like his late wife who died giving birth to her son. And nobody even dared to suspect the great and esteemed police captain to be hiding some secrets. Now you will pay Shikaku. You fucked up one time too many. Yuden. Kaisei no jutsu. A bright red tail made form QB's chakra lashed out from Naruto, and a grin came onto his face. Want to play a little Shukaku-chan? I know that you don't like me Shuka-chan, but you'll need to be sealed again, or else you might become a hindrance in my plans. But the feral growl he threw the boy away, and then the mysterious person took over. The eyes turned a brilliant shade of blue, which made several of the people wonder what the hell happened to the kid. A bright flash was seen, and Gara was slammed into the air by a fast kick to the stomach. Then the mysterious person followed it up with his own version of the Urarenge, opening a few celestial gates, knowing that it wouldn't hurt due to QB's healing rate. After a few slams with a foot and a fist the demon-possessed kid fell back onto the sand, and the mysterious person smirked. Now came the tricky part. Sealing technique. Gaku Fujin. Takra became visible on Naruto's fingertops and slammed right into the stomach of the demon-possessed kid. With a grin matching Naruto's the mysterious person handed back control to Naruto. Oh no. What am I doing? All I remember was sand crushing me, and now I'm standing here. Who's the panda guy? The Kashi could only stare. The kid had just executed a sealing method known only to the Kages or those who studied sealing methods. This would bear some looking into. And the fact that the eyes had changed was also a thing that should be noted. Without much trouble they got to Sunagakur and Naruto was the one carrying the panda guy as he had dubbed Shukaku's container. When they got to the gates they saw that there were only two guards, and they looked in astonishment at Naruto, who was carrying the boy with a gourd on his shoulders, with the gourd visible for all to see. 
but Naruto entered Sunagakur as silence descended over that part of the village. They saw their resident demon being carried by a strange kid, who seemed to be accompanied by Jounins from Konoha and a few genin. They parted to allow the strange group entrance towards wherever they were going. Naruto looked at the people assembled there and noticed their looks at the boy he was carrying. He noticed the fear in their eyes. He briefly entertained the notion of letting the Shukaku out just to make them experience true terror, but he decided not to. She wouldn't be so forgiving if he let her enemy out of its mortal shell. Then they'd have to fight against it and Naruto didn't want to risk it now. It didn't matter very much to him, but at least he would have some fun. He's got some of your humor. I'm not exactly sure if I'd like him to get that from you. Of course he has my humor. He doesn't even know you, but I'm the one who's always been there for him. He trusts me completely. QB just smiled and said trust is pretty easily gained when a pretty lady would do anything for a guy. The Kashi got into the Kazika Gay's office and delivered the scroll, and Naruto decided to ask someone why they were so afraid of the boy he was carrying. He decided to ask a Jounin who just stood there idle as if waiting for someone. Mister can you tell me why everybody is so afraid of this guy I'm carrying? The Jounin looked at Naruto and then gasped as he saw the Kazika Gay's son lying on the kid's shoulder. He is bad news kid. If he were conscious now I'm sure he would have killed you without much thought. Like Shukaku could ever hurt me. I'm too fast for that little git to hit sir. The Jounin got unnerved as the name of the beast imprisoned within Gara was spoken and his eyes narrowed and he said dangerously. How do you know that kid? I'm his arch nemesis from 800 years ago. The damn bastard bit off a good sized chunk of my tail. It grew back of course, but I'm kinda angry with him. Then Naruto did a few hand seals and whispered. Yaokai secret jutsu. Illusion of forgetfulness. The black aura was momentarily seen around the Jounin's head, and then A glared at Naruto and walked away without even having noticed Gara. Naruto had enough of carrying the weight and threw Gara off his shoulders, letting the body hit the floor. Then he threw the sand gourd next to the boy and then decided to have some fun with the boy. Even though he'd probably get into some trouble he decided to do some things to the boy. Making a few hand seals he began to manipulate his chakra to make Gara feel sleepy for weeks, since he knew that the container must be awake for the rest of his life, lest the Shukaku eat away his soul. That's what that stupid thing always does whenever they deem him worthy of possession someone. Nobody ever noticed what had happened to the Jounin and to Gara, as they were momentarily distracted by a Genin, causing some racket about some stupid thing he needed to do. Only Kakashi noted that the Jounin was slightly dazed or something like that, but shrugged it off as the heat getting to the Jounin's head and making him dazed. Later they went back to Konoha and Naruto felt slightly better after having seen Shukaku once again and apparently sealed him again. He couldn't exactly remember what had happened all that he did was a masculine voice telling someone something about taking over or something. Suddenly a disturbing imager made its way to his mind and without much hesitation he ran to the side of the road behind some bushes and began to puke his guts out. The image he had got from somewhere contained Kurunai Sensei being taken by several guys, including that smoking Jounin that taught Team 10 and Kakashi. When he had emptied most of his stomach contents he came back to the group and received weird looks from the Genin and confused looks from the Jounin. He went to Kakashi and motioned for the man to bend down a little since he was still a small guy for his age. As the Jounin bent down and Naruto whispered in his ear. Kakashi Sensei please tell me something about Kurunai San. What do you want to know about her? If you think she might be material for a girlfriend then I must prove you wrong. She shunned most men after her heart and that gave her the reputation of Ice Queen. Naruto just smiled a meek smile and then said, actually it's about her likes and dislikes and what her three sizes are. I'm thinking of letting her star in one of the books I'm going to publish. Kakashi's visible eye betrayed some of his perverse intent and he said. She's fairly proportioned and has a nice set of frists. She looks like an average girl, but once you come close you can see that she has red eyes, which is a very unusual eye color even in Kanoha, which is famous for the Byakugan. The other thing is that she never has allowed a man to stay over at her place ever. That also confirms that she is Wham. The fist slammed into Kakashi's face and made the Jounin fall on his arse, as he looked at Kurunai who had a look on her face that promised a swift death. That is none of your business Kakashi. Who I like and what I like is my business to know and you can go and fuck off for all that I care. At the crude language Naruto briefly raised an eyebrow while Hinata blushed and Kiba and Shino just shared the same look of astonishment, although Shino's was almost nullified by the dark glasses that he wore. She sure has some temper Naru-kun. Maybe you should think about getting into a relationship with her or something. Haku won't be enough to sate your lust. You'll need more women than one to sate you. If I may make a suggestion that will stimulate you in the future that would be beneficial for our relationship, then I'd be happy. Sure tell me what you want to suggest to me. I'd like to suggest that if you see a woman that can fight and looks good to you, that you should just try to get her to trust you and then bond yourself to her. 
but Haku it would be easily done since she already trusts you a great deal. With this Kurinai woman then I think you'd need to apply a little bit more tact and I think that you'd need to transform into a full yaokai if you're willing to try and impress her. Naruto looked as the divine punishment of Kurinai rained down on Kakashi. A ripping sound and an anguished cry from Kakashi was all to seal the man's fate. Paper was falling to the floor and a cover fell with a small amount of dust being pushed away from the cover when it fell. Itcha Itcha Paradise was on the cover and Kakashi stared blankly at the book which had been ripped apart by the woman. The tear fell from his visible eye and he looked at the rest of the people around and then decided that it should be necessary to keep up a front for them while he contemplated to buy a new book to replace the one ripped apart. The rest of the trip was boring and Naruto began to draw several new scenes for the book he was making. Traveling gave him a lot of free time to write or draw scenes for his books. Inspiration was bountiful because they met lots of people in the passing of time and Kakashi seemed top taken interest in what he had already drawn. The next chapter of the book would feature something unusual. A girl dressed in very little clothing about to take on a fiend which would manifest as a tentacle demon. The moment Kakashi laid eyes on the work he just let out a chuckle and patted Naruto's head affectionately and Naruto suppressed a shudder. Come on, let's play one more time. I already gave you most of my clothing including my cloak. I quit. Then I keep your stuff. Damned fox what did you say? The mysterious person is slammed into a bar of the cage and a small cramp made its way through Naruto's stomach. He shrugged it off as he might have ate something bad. The rest of the trip was slightly uneventful, with only one small incident involving Hinata and Kiba occurring with the latter apologizing or something. He must have bumped into her because she had a blush raging on her face. Naruto just smirked and walked with his team with Sasuke being an obnoxious ass and Sakura love struck fangirl. He felt content with the knowledge that he'd need to get more women and do the same to them like he had done with QB. In several places women sneezed at the exact same time, one winning a bet because of her sneezing, causing the dice to land in her favor. Her assistant gathered the money and the two women departed with a bag full of money. The end. So how was this part, I hope you like it. And if you like it share this part with your friends and like the video too. And don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily awesome fanfiction. Okay it's time for me to go. Bye bye.